This is going to be awesome. So I'm Peg Samuel, Fear Studios. I was an NYU professor in media. Uh, Fear Studios were, were a 10,000 PFP uh, fashion-related project heading to the metaverse and all kinds of utility in it. Um, how about each person say a little quick nip about yourselves, and then we'll get into the now and the future of this. Thank you, Peg. And congratulations on Fierce Studios and Fierce NFTs. It's an amazing project. Thank you. Uh, I'm Vlad Ginsberg, CEO and co-founder of Block Party. Uh, we are a multi-platform, uh, multi-blockchain platform for minting NFTs and enabling creators to create. Uh, we give, we provide uh, lots of apps and tooling, and we work with Warner Music Group as well as a number of high-profile artists uh, to enable them to create great NFTs. Cool. Uh, my name's Noah Adams. I'm a photographer based out of Tokyo. Um, I work with a lot of designers and streetwear artists, and yeah, here to talk about the future of NFTs moving forward for creators. Hey, thanks. And I'm Brian Mark. I'm the Director of Content and Education at Rally. Uh, Rally is a platform that lets creators and communities build their own digital economies online. Um, that includes NFTs and uh, social tokens. Love it. So we're coming at this from all angles. So I want to just, for me, it's kind of the thorn in my side and like a little bit of an elephant in the room. Like right now, NFTs feel like with the 10,000 projects, it's like a flipper economy. And there's some really good money to be made out there and it's changed some lives. So I do not want to discount that at all. Um, and it's very interesting. And I do feel like utility is really important, but I want to just open up that piece of the discussion and then kind of get into like where we're thinking things are going. And you can, do you want to start, Noah? Because we were talking about that backstage. Um, you were like hot on that. I was like, <laughs> let's talk about this outside. Yeah, so I definitely like to speak on how, in my opinion, NFTs were started and created as a way for creators and artists to display their work and not only display their work, be compensated fairly and be supported by the community. And it's kind of turned into like, uh, almost like, like how flipping streetwear and Supreme clothes used to be. You buy this, sell it. Can I get this? Let me max mint, sell it. Where's the 10X? You know, and it's not so much supporting the artists and creators anymore because if you look at a lot of the jpegs that are you know big in the nft they're not like some of the art is amazing don't get me wrong but some of the art it's almost like quick created just to see how fast we can get these 10,000 nfts minted so yeah i really think that moving forward for creators it's, it's very important that we focus more on the artwork and the creator itself and not like making my quick cash grab, you know? Yeah, what I, always, what I always enjoyed about them when I heard about them like back in 2017, 2018 was that there's this royalty concept for a creator. So if the creator's like work starts getting worth so much more money, they're still getting a piece as it's not being traded 10X in one day, but over the years of them being an artist, they can still like reap the benefits of their art being more valuable. And it's gotten into this like real frenzy right now. Um, um, do either of you guys want to also speak on that? Because yeah, yeah, thank you. I think a word that, that Noah said that sticks out to me is community. And I think yeah. the, like the best PFP projects today, if you look in the space, like the ones that are most enduring, there is a community uh, amongst the holders. And I think that same thing applies to artists trying to build or creators trying to build in the space is if you can build something that really matters to a community rather than maybe to an audience or to that flipper crowd, like I, I think that that's where maybe enduring value comes from and the ability to build something that, um, you know, like we were talking about backstage about Fierce, like building something that actually has tangible value and, and has real utility built in rather than just something that's a, a, a pump and dump or, or you know, that, that flash in the pan. Go ahead. I traditionally, I actually haven't really thought about PFPs a lot for creators. Uh, we haven't really gotten into those at Block Party. When we started looking at ERC-1155, me coming from the fine art industry, I knew that was a token standard used, used for gaming mostly or conceived for gaming. And as any art person looked at that and said, oh, wait, that's additions. 
So we kind of thought about 1155 as um, being additions, but when you dig into like what an ERC 1155 actually is, you're like, oh, well, no, it's just a subdivided contract. That's not really an addition. So we kind of shied away from, from those at Block Party and tried to encourage creators to, even if it's an addition of 10, still mint 10 individual um, additions. And um, one of the things that we found from working with creators and at Block Party, we talked to musicians, we talked to artists, and one of the things that we found, um, community is such an, you guys talk about community is such an important thing to develop for, for the creator, but also, what does that mean? You know, for what, is it, what does a community mean? Is it their audience? Is it the, their collectors? And one of the challenges that we found working with artists and musicians, especially higher profile ones like blue chip artists, is that they're, they're looking around and wondering like, hey, how is some 24 year old anonymous kid on, um, in the Ethereum community making more money than me and I'm like a blue chip artist in a gallery? And we're like, well, that kid is like in the community. That, that person is engaging every single day, whereas somebody that's represented by a gallery has gotten used to their gallerist um, managing the marketing, managing the outreach, managing all these things, and that artist kind of loses agency um, talking to their collectors. And I think what you see with the really successful artists in the NFT space, they have a great deal of agency in building their community, in talking to their people, in developing uh, their culture. Thank you. You literally just answered the question I was thinking in my head. Like, like you know, there's art and, and how that, the traditional art had run, and then, ha and then community, you know? And so you went, you went there with that. Do you, you guys have stuff to add, I can tell. Just go for yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, you know, on community to, to kind of add on to that, that question of like, what is community and what's the difference between community and audience really? To me, um, what the technology that we're talking about here empowers is the ability to build with your community rather than just for them. I think it's that shift of like being able to accrete value collectively. So um, an NFT project on its own, you're able to maybe build together and potentially increase value in that project or, or, or build things that come out of that. Like we've seen projects that launch and then, um, you know, kind of more gets added on. I think what we're really interested in at Rally is the combination of NFTs and social tokens as kind of two pieces of the same pie, sort of, or two sides of the same coin, um, in the sense that the NFTs serve as like the digital goods of that community, and the social tokens serve as the digital currencies. And so the ability to combine those adds a layer of like fungibility and the ability to reward your community with a token that becomes the money of that community. You know, that idea of like money as communal glue is something that, that we think a lot about. Will you take a second just to expand just in case anybody here yeah. has no social tokens and what that means versus like an NFT? Totally, so um, NFTs, non-fungible token. Um, every NFT is unique, it's a one of one. Um, uh, a fungible token, a social token, um, is like the dollar bill in your wallet. And so um, on Rally, we have 280 creators, each of whom have their own social token um, in our economy. Um, over half of those are six-figure economies now, um, and 10% of them are million-dollar economies. And these are people who've built from the ground up, bringing their audience and their community into our space and have provided a combination of rewards for holding social tokens, so rewarding people who are actually like believing in and supporting that community as it, as it looks to grow, but also providing utility through NFTs. So, and those NFTs are purchasable with the social token. And then social token is synonymous with utility token, right? Is yes. it? Yeah. Same thing, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, actually, do you mind if I ask? Um, yeah, yeah. Like to de-abstract, like you guys, you guys have worked with some amazing creators, like uh, Portugal The Man, I know, is a, is a great project you guys did. Uh, can you kind of maybe share like how some of these uh, creators are using social tokens in their community in a meaningful yeah. way? I would love to, thanks. Um, so Portugal The Man's a great example. They just um, released a new single a couple weeks ago. Um, the new single, they offered a pre-save incentive to their community and said, hey, if you pre-save this on our major streaming platforms, we'll reward you with PTM coin. So that's them basically taking from their stash of PTM coin on Rally and saying, look, you do something that helps us, something that benefits us as a, as a, a community, we'll reward you with some of our token. Um, that token then, uh, holders are able to access exclusive content libraries. They're also able to spend it on merch or tickets or things like that. So it really contributes to a, um, a circular economy rather than kind of the traditional creator economy of like 
an audience funneling money to a creator. Um, within these creator economies empowered by social tokens, money can kind of move through and around from um, community members to community members, from the founders of the community down to the members as well. Um, other good examples too, um, Colin Benders is one of our, um, he's an, an analog synth musician. Um, he's got a, a gated uh, a Discord that he uses token holding to, to gate, um, as well as uh, an archive of, of past performances of his that are only available to people who hold a certain number of his tokens. Cool, amazing. Noah, question for you. So NFT photography. Yeah. Um, tell, tell me like a little bit about your journey because I know it, it took like this other stuff that we were talking about or even my project, like why Fierce actually went with the PFP was just meeting the market where it's at. Part of us, we wanted to do ticketing, fashion show ticketing, like green room stuff and everything. Like what could we do with the technology? And I know we were talking a little bit backstage about technology, but also like NFT photography started kind of slow and then like having this like ramp up moment and then, you know, future. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so I believe photography has kind of, in a sense, lost its value with the use of Instagram and social media and Twitter. Um, and being able to create a, a token-backed photo, in a sense, is a way that photographers can really monetize and capitalize in this space. Um, at first, photographers weren't really doing well on in the NFT space. There's been a couple of collections that have taken off, but yeah. um, I think especially with photography, it's it's very um, it's very hard to kind of establish yourself as a photographer and make a living off of your photos and not just like your service as like a wedding photographer or a um, whatever, event photographer. So as like an artist, it's it's crucial right now, the space moving forward and, and you know, making, yeah. a, making a noise, making an appearance. It's so interesting and then I'll let you talk because I'm, I'm, I'm an art collector as well and I collect some fine art photography and it's some of it is like this um, almost vintage from some Motown stuff that I have. And to me, there's like storytelling behind the pictures and the photographer that got me wanting to buy the pieces. Um, and that they're, but to your point, like I could also maybe see them on the web or see them on Instagram or whatever. So it's like that this, the mechanism of NFTs now can get you paid on your photography work, but then you can probably speak to this too, but as a collector and then it actually taking off to have the buyers and everything, that's, that's, that's what I'm kind of like wa voyeur, voyeur watching this happening. Um, I love photography, NFTs, yeah. uh, because that to me, uh, after natively digital art and arguably photography is like an anal a hybrid analog uh, digital art form, um, it's such a great use case for a blockchain mm -hmm. and it's such a great use case for this technology. Um, something, I've worked with tons of photographers in my fine art career, and something that I would urge people to think about in, in art and creativity and blockchain is that the art of, of painting and sculpture is thousands and thousands of years old, and then the photography as an art, as a, as a thing, is a little over 100 years old. Uh, in the 1970s, fine art photographers were still fighting to be called fine artists and weren't, con and weren't considered as such. So that art form is like in its, it's like barely, a, if, if, if painting is an adult, photography is like a toddler and it's just coming of age. And we oftentimes think about photography as a thing that happens on a print, but to your point, Instagram, the internet has taught us that photography can be enjoyed not as a print, it's just not collectible. But suddenly you have a blockchain, you have an NFT, and you can add scarcity and collectability to digital, to digital photography. Um, there's a photographer somewhere running around Denver right now called Dave Krugman. He's a great, he's a great example of he this. He took my picture once. Lucky at you. An event. Yeah, like I have, I have an original and a minute. <laughs> uh, he's a great example of this playing out in the real world. He, he shoots like these rainy, dramatic New York City scenes and he tries to keep the raindrops in focus and the background is blurred. That is really, really nearly impossible to print as a fine art print. The lighting is too soft, it'll look like crap. 
um, on an on a beautiful NFT display as a digitally native artwork, it shines. You you start to see a whole different element of photography, a whole different collectability, and it gets super exciting. Yeah, I just wanted to touch on that. It's I feel like photography has kind of evolved from a thing that was more so printed, you know, and with Instagram and technology, it's shifting to more digital. Like if you think of photos in a sense, you more so think of looking them on your phone and not printing them or um, <clears throat> having them be a physical piece. And I think, like you said, it, it's photography art, fine art photography still is in its infancy. Um, and through NFTs, it'll start to grow up and get... It could be more, Renaissance. Yeah, it could be huge. Yeah, I love it too, because what I think about, when I think about all this stuff, not from like the whole, you know, flipper thing, but as a collector and an art collector that, like I have these, actually they're from the 70s, these fine art photography on my wall, and I thought, well, if somebody wants to offer me like 15 times what's this worth, I'll sell it right off my wall in the nice frame I bought. Um, so if you do collect and want to like sell or, you know, your, your work as a collector, you know, and flip it and a piece goes back to the originator, um, the web <laughs> in general, like the web, you know, web one, two allows you to have a collector and a buyer from anywhere and like maybe not the gallery per se in person, right? And then the web three piece of it all is the artist still gets paid on these things. Uh, I think we're getting there. Uh, I think um, some of the smart contracts we have are uh, properly taking the cut that's supposed to happen and, and properly um, doing most of the work. I think there's still a ways to go in guaranteeing the delivery of the royalty in a decentralized way. Um, and I think some of the things that we're seeing with the NFT display companies that are starting to think about hardware on the display and software on the display Maybe there's software that hooks into marketplaces and somebody could sell their art literally off their wall if it's on their display and it goes somewhere else. Um, but I, I do think there's still more work to do to guarantee the delivery of the royalty in a decentralized way. I agree with that. I agree with that. I see you nodding down there. Anything you want to add in? Um, and you can even change the subject if you want. I don't have to moderate completely. <laughs> I like your moderation. Though. Um, I think... Um, yeah, I think where, where my head goes is it's back to community and that idea of co communities of collectors are a really interesting piece here too. I think like um, thinking not just about um, communities of artists, which I think are, that, that's, that's a, a long, uh, there's a long road there. Um, but even for you as a collector of like, of modern photography, you know, of, of, of fine photography, um, that's something that really like web one and web two helped empower was the ability to connect with other people who care about what you care about. I think. What's interesting now is the ability to build um, digital communities that have um, a financialized connection as well. Like you can actually kind of co-invest with other people in projects that you believe in, um, which is n new and, and different and really exciting. That's pretty cool. Actually, I just remember, yeah, to your point, I like own a few shares of a Warhol. So then that opens up this, to that, to me, it's like a financial mechanism. Like, okay, that a different, a, a different round of people can own you know, fractionalized piece of this art that you, I probably wouldn't buy a Warhol unless I was a multi, multi, multi millionaire as an investment piece, right? But now I can own even a bunch of shares of one, you know, and get into that investment class of people with fractionalized ownership. It's so funny, when I started my career in fine art and I, I would go to like Sotheby's and Christie's and suggest that you know, I had like three clients that wanted to go in together in a Basquiat and flip it. I would get like shooed out of the room. Like they would be like, you can't, this isn't an asset, it's not a tradable asset, get out of here. And now today, Christie's and Sotheby's and all these yeah. things are, are, all these places are really embracing this financialization, which, um, which is pretty neat. I think it's yeah. cool. And, and I think, and I think you're right that there's, we're, none, none of what we're talking about on stage today is brand spanking new. Web one, web two, it's always been about finding how you, other, other communities that care about the same things you do. And the financialization piece is where it gets interesting. I love social tokens as well because you can start exploring things like 
earn to publish, or publish to earn, rather, play to earn. And I think um, we're talking about creators like fine artists, photographers, uh, musicians. Uh, I think we haven't even scratched the surface of content writers that can start publishing to earn uh, and uh, earning in, you know, earning in microtransactions in real time for contributing content that people find interesting. Yeah, so uh, on that, I think the world is full of like brilliant creators who are not themselves marketers, who are not social media managers, who are not digital publishers. And the ability for these creators to reward the people who are contributing to what they're building in a token that's theirs, in something that's, that they're helping build, um, is really stellar. And I think it connects to the DAO space and the movement that's happening there. But even the ability for that to center around one individual and for that person to be able to tap graphic designers as they need it. It's something we see at Rally is, you know, the people who are coming in and looking to launch tokens, they're not, um, if you're a, a professional streamer, um, you're not a, maybe a graphic designer. You're not maybe a social media manager. And the ability um, to, to tap people from their community to help them build that token-gated Discord, to help them build their social media following is really um, stellar. It, it does take a village, and the ability to reward that village through your own social token is pretty stellar. Yeah, yeah I like that. Then you, you have a, like, because I totally agree with that. I was talking about that once before. It's like an artist now has to be a marketer as well to have their work, right? Or, but now what I am liking about some of the platforms that, you know, the marketplaces is that if they've, if it's a curated one, then they've done a lot of the marketing. And if I'm a collector on wherever, then I'm like, okay, well, this has been curated. I can read about, you know, it's just all set up nicely for me to then decide, you know, about the work and all that. Um, but it's really interesting. So yeah, getting into like the future of this stuff, right? So it's like the social tokens, DAOs. You just reminded me, I was saying there's this project, there's a couple projects doing this, this but there's one, I love them, Wow Pixies. And f you know, female focus, but they are a DAO and also buying other collections and art for their DAO and they all vote on it and there's a submission process. And I just think it's super interesting. And then it becomes like community on community like really good vibes. Um, here's a question for you actually, because yeah. I think I'd like to know this, and I think you might like to know this, but in a direct to consumer world, and you know, now artists have to be marketers or maybe don't, like we, we ask ourselves all the time, like at Blog Party, what, why are we here? What, what is the role of the platform when a, a creator can go and mint themselves and market themselves? What value can we add? And, well, I'd rather ask you, like you're a photographer, what value can, can platforms add to you as a creator? So, um, like you were saying earlier, um, some people might not, if you're a photographer, you might not be a social media marketer or a business person, and your focus is on taking the photos. Um, I think platforms can really help creators by making onboarding quite simple and explaining the tech and explaining how someone might be able to build a community or build an ecosystem and, and informing them that there are certain steps that should be taken and kind of just being, being there for them as a platform with maybe some marketing or explaining to these artists what a social token might be or just kind of informing them. Because if you don't know if you're not aware of how to create a community, you're not gonna create a community. If you're not aware of how social tokens work, you're not going to be able to get into that. So it's like, me, I'm young, and I'm in Web3 and into crypto, so I have an understanding, but what if someone, someone's father, who's been a photographer for 40 years, wants to get in to, to your platform? You know, How would someone like that be able to just log in and get started within a day or two is kind of the solution or the question, I guess. No, I mean, that's, that's, um, that's good to know because we, like, we find that we work with a lot of like first time, like maybe established artists doing their first couple of NFTs. Mm -hmm. And then once they figure it out, they're like, well, what do I need a platform for? Right, like, right, right. I got Manifold, I got, I'm, I'm gonna do this myself. Right. Uh, and actually, 
I super support that. You know, I, I super support like once the artist is like gets matriculates from 101 to 201 to 301 is like, oh, I got this because that, that that's really what like self sovereignty is all about in this space. Right. I think um, at Rally, the the way that we're thinking about it, one is that smooth on ramp from Web two to Web three, like kind of sitting as that intermediary. So we know that um, the next million people who uh, who get a wallet. Um, we need to help bring them kind of into that ecosystem with that smooth ramp. And, and that applies to both the creators who we're helping support on the platform, but also their fans. You know, we need to figure out how to make sure that we're supporting creators with tools to educate their fans around what all of this is, kind of what all this means. Um, the other pieces, though, that we're able to provide are like um, liquidity. So actually making the token worth something out of the gate and a, a token bonding curve that kind of keeps the price it, um, managed, I would say, generally. Um, the other piece is abundant utility, and that's really what we're pushing towards as we look at 2022, is building a ton of utility for our social tokens and NFTs through um, our third-party ecosystem. And that's really like working with developers to help build um, token gating mechanisms for WordPress, for Zoom calls, you know, the ability to kind of um, make NFTs, which I think right now so much of the discourse is around the aesthetic um, or the rarity, um, to instead make it something that provides utility um, unlike anything else that we can kind of have. Transferable utility is a really powerful tool and something that we're really bullish on at Rally. So awesome. So I got the, I got the two minute warning. So I wanna, I wanna just like almost wrap this up. Can you guys hear me? All of a sudden I don't feel like my mic's working. Um, I can hear you. You can hear. Can you, can, can you guys hear me? Can Hello? you hear me? They turned Hello? down our mics. It's Thank time you. to go. Um, so I heard on a panel one of the days here that there's something like, we have two minutes left, so we're going to wrap, but um, there's something like 400,000 active NFT wallets, 3 million total. So to me, that number is low, and there's just so much more coming. And the future of this stuff, it's like still so early. I'm so in it sometimes, it's, but it's just nice to like get a broad perspective and even have this conversation. So to me, my takeaway for anybody is just like, we're early, it's young. Um, even it's amazing that there's like 11,000 plus people, you know, at this conference. I know it's not all for NFTs, but we're packed in here on a Saturday. So I'm just like really psyched about where all this is going and it's just fun to learn with each other. Just want to add on to that. It's like if you're here right now, like you said, you are so early and like in this space, you kind of have to be active all the time, engaging. And it's nice sometimes to take a step back and realize how early we are. It's almost like not that I was born or here for it, but the development of the first web, web one, you know, all the companies that were here when it first started, how many of them are gone now and we are so early. We're 10, 15 years ahead of our time. And it's, it's going to be fun to watch all this develop. Yeah. 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 Uh, for, um, for those of us that have, that have been in the crypto space since like the early 2010s or whatever, we always talk about mass adoption. And the creator economy and NFTs are, are truly where that's happening. Uh, because we're privileged to work with Warner Music, we talked to some of like the biggest artists back in like June, and they were asking, "What are NFTs?" And we had that conversation in June. We're like, "Follow this stuff. Here's some resources." Three months later, they come back to us with ideas. Like, it's kind of it's kind of nuts where somebody you hear on the radio is call, is like, "Wait, here's my idea of how to use a blockchain." And that to me, that's a major mass adoption event, of, uh, and the audiences that they bring onboarding into our space. And I love the idea of us being able to capture the love that people already feel for, for uh, whoever they're a fan of. Um, we don't need to generate that love. That already exists. It's just up to us to, to help figure out a new way to, for um, consumers to show it. To onboard them. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank you, thank you guys as well. Thank you all.